hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl esther and merry christmas by the way even though christmas was how many days ago three days ago but you know i haven't been on youtube in like two weeks so merry christmas and thank you all to the people that watch my vlogmas e episodes guaranteed i only bought out two but uh, your girl was very busy to the lead up to christmas doing things with her family shopping upon shopping cooking upon cooking so i couldn't film everything obviously by god's grace next year i'll be doing more vlogmas episodes but it was good to dip my water my toes dip my water english is my first language i promise you dip my toes into the water for a little bit so today i'm really excited about this video that i'm doing today because so your girl this year she has become a reader let me tell you that again i have become a reader i read a lot of books now as a writer the best advice that i can give to people or people have given to me is that if you're a writer you need to read because how can you be a writer and not read books that's how you learn how to develop your writing skills that's how you learn from different authors how you get inspiration and i used to ignore that advice for many many years hold on a second guys i really want a sip of my tea um i used to ignore that advice for many many years because i was like i'm not a reader <laughs> i don't read books like and when I was younger, I used to read books. I used to read quite a lot, actually. I used to read, like, series and, like, Jacqueline Wilson books. I've read literally every single Tracy Beaker book alive on the planet. But going into secondary school, the only books that I read were the books that my English teacher would give me, like, Macbeth, A Fellow, all those Shakespeare plays, uh, Jekyll and Hyde, Frankenstein, which were not nice books. I have to, I don't know if I'm ever going to reread them, but they were not nice. So that actually made my reading experience pretty bad. So I just never used to read. And then when it came to the Bible, because I wasn't really much of a reader, I didn't really understand how to read the Bible either. So I ignored the Bible for many, many years until, thank God, 2019, I decided to read the Bible. And I guess actually reading the Bible gave me a passion to read more i just didn't know it at the time and then last year because i was doing a lot of projects i was in my final year of uni and i was stressed a lot of the time and the only reading i was doing was for projects and projects and essays i decided that i need a fiction book to read because i needed something to that was a netflix to get my stress levels down and to just immerse myself in another world and thank god i did that because since then, I have not stopped reading. I've just been reading book after book after book. During the pandemic as well, what are we doing at home? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing behind closed doors? So I decided to read a lot of Christian nonfiction books to do with the Bible. And I fell in love. I fell in love with books by different sound authors about the Bible and how to study the Bible. So I was reading a lot of nonfiction, but it wasn't until 2021, earlier in the summer this year, that I fell back in love with fiction. Because the type of writer I am, I do write nonfiction, but I also write fiction as well. And when I was in year six, I did a lot of fiction writing. Just know that your girl loves to read now. And I didn't know, but there's such a thing as called booktubers. So, to go along with my newfound passion of reading, I decided to watch every booktuber that I could find on YouTube. And I've been obsessed. I've been subscribing to so many booktubers. Um, there's one that I really love. Her name is Hannah Bryan. I, I believe that is her name, but she's an amazing booktuber. She, um, she shares books on Instagram too, and she has a YouTube channel. I'll probably link her channel down below because we got to support our fellow black sisters. I don't think I'm going to become a booktuber, but this video, I, I had to do it because I want to share with you guys that you, if you don't know, if you don't love reading, I believe this video will make you love reading. So let's get started. As I said, I waffle a lot in my introductions and I'm not going to apologize for that, but... I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for future content. Please like and please share with a friend. So I'm just going to go through all the different books that I've read this year. I've read quite a bit. The old Esther would probably say she's read two books a year. But this year I've read like 20. Now to some of you guys that are avid readers, that might not be a lot. I know some people that have read like 80 books this year. But for me as a beginner, over 20 books is a lot. 
some of them have been paperback like this and then some of them have been ebooks that i found um through this app called libby i'm not going to talk about those ones today because i just think it's going to be a bit difficult to show but i will talk about the books that i have in physical copy and while we're at it let's talk about home going <laughs> home going this is a book this is a book let me tell you home going by Yar guysy oh please if i mispronounce her name and she's watching this video please i'm very sorry but home going is an absolute masterpiece so home going is about effia and essie two sisters with very different destinies so these two sisters is based in ghana by the way because yagazi is ghanaian and one of the sisters was sold into slavery one was a slave trader's wife and it basically takes you through different generation different generations from each of the sister and different time periods so we start with effie and essie as children and how they were basically brought into the world and then we go through their adulthood but we don't stop at their story we start we go through their children's stories and their grandchildren's stories there's even like a there's a um, family tree at the beginning of the book so that you guys can see all the different characters that are going to be introduced through this story and it's absolutely amazing never have before have i read a book with such fantastic storytelling now i'm someone that i'm very much I, i've learned this year i'm very much plot driven i don't really care for literary literary fiction i'm very much plot based character based dialogue based if you're describing the scenes that surround you saying the ocean is looking beautiful they're shaking the coconut like i'm not into that like if it doesn't add anything to the story i don't want to know about it i want to know about the characters i want to see plot after plots and i want to see dialogue that's just the type of person i am and that's how i write as well but this book had everything it had plot it had character it had dialogue it had beautiful descriptions description of the scene that made me think that i was actually in ghana and now i really want to go to ghana ghana has always been on my bucket list but because of this book i want to go there more so i really recommend this book it's amazing that it's a black woman that wrote this book because something else that i have done this year is try to read more diverse books my um upbringing and because of the school that i went to i did not read books by african authors i did not read books by black authors i only read books by white authors which obviously it wasn't a terrible experience but i'm a black person so i would really love to read more about my culture and as someone who's growing up i'm 23 now i just think that it's important for me to really diverse my views because i only had one type of experience but this book really helps me understand the black experience I recommend if you're somebody that likes to read multiple um, character viewpoints, this is for you. All right, so the next book that I read, and this is not going in any order, like it's just in the order of the stack that I have right here, is Gay Girl Good Gods. And it is by my one of my favourite Bible teachers and speakers, Jackie Hill Perry. I am a fan of Jackie Hill Perry. I love her to bits. She's another person that I discovered in the pandemic. I mean, I've heard of her, but I never really watched her videos or listened to her teachings. She's absolutely amazing. She's just amazing. The way that she dissects scripture, the way she interprets it, and the way she that she just teaches is very, very relatable. And this is her life story. So if you don't know Jackie Hall Perry, she, um, before she became a Christian, she was a lesbian. And this is just her biography of how god really taught her more about her sexuality and god the god through the gospel came to reshape redefine her life and i'm going to be very honest in these reviews i was expecting a bit more i feel really bad for saying that because jackie hill perry is absolutely amazing but i was expecting a bit more with this book it was kind of like she, she didn't really know what style she was writing in one minute it was autobiography slash personal memoir the next minute it kind of read like fiction but based on a real story if you know what i mean but it was it was still really 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 captivating i finished this in a couple of days and i actually preferred the end section where she talks about 
what the church can do for same-sex relationships and how they can fit into the conversation about a lgbtq like that's something that i've always wanted to learn about especially what the bible says and she really helps me understand deeper where the church fits into this conversation so i actually preferred the end of this book to the beginning would i be reading this again i'm not sure but i'll definitely be reading more jackie hill perry because she's a fantastic writer it's just i don't know i had higher expectations the next book that i have is one of my faves of 2021 and it's a classic i cannot believe i'm saying this because i never thought that i would be a classic babe like again as i told you guys the books that i read in english i did not find fascinating all you people that said that you reread frankenstein and dr jekyll and mr hyde like you found that really nice and it was so interesting reading it again as an adult yeah no the only book that i liked during english was the kite runner that was amazing and i'm planning to reread that in 2022 but i don't know why something just told me inside that you need to read more classics you need to really just you know if you're going to be a reader like read some classics so i decided to pick up pride and prejudice because this is probably one of the most famous classics in the world by the amazing jane austen and i loved it i absolutely loved it at first when i was reading it i was just like what is this book where is it going and the language is so archaic so it was very hard to understand but because your girl is an english babe i didn't let that distract me and i kept going so pride and prejudice is about the beautiful and famous elizabeth bennett and mr darcy mr william darcy so a lot the thing with jane austen is that a lot of her books are based on marriage and how you know young girls are trying to make their way in the world but back then the only way they could make their way in the world was through marriage because women were women's status was measured by their relationship status and that's what jane discovers through her characters so we have elizabeth who's a sister of five i believe and her mother is trying to get her five daughters married as quick as possible now i can relate with this because obviously i come from a nigerian background like marriage is a very big thing in our community but this mother was just desperate it was as if she was the one that was getting married and that her life depended on was dependent on her daughters getting married that was her oxygen so you have these five sis sisters and one of them is elizabeth from the beginning you know elizabeth does not care about marriage she's just more like yeah if i if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't she's not as desperate as her mom or her older sister to get married and she meets somebody called mr darcy who is from a very privileged background a very rich back background and he's absolutely horrible <laughs> i don't know how to describe it but as it is in the title he has a lot of pride and obviously you know what because this is a romance book so you know that elizabeth and mr darcy are definitely going to get together so it wasn't love at first sight it was more hate at first sight I believe Elizabeth really did hate Mr. Darcy and then Mr. Darcy disliked her, then grew to love her over time. So the moral of the story is that she had prejudice against him because she obviously didn't like him from the start and that was stopping her from loving him and then he had pride. So that's why it's called Pride and Prejudice and I absolutely loved it. I loved all the characters. I love This is very plot based as well, like something is always happening. This was a realistic romance book. I always feel like romance books are so unrealistic, which I guess is okay. You read books for not reality you read books for fun to emerge yourself in a different world but this was a realistic one and i'm definitely going to reread this i also purchased um emma by jane austen and i think i'm going to read all her books next year because i really really do enjoy her as a writer so my next book my books are a mixture of non-fiction um fiction and that and some of them are christian based too so the next book that i have this is and i know this is going to be my all-time fave forever for as long as i should live it is redeeming love by francine rivers francine rivers is a babe she's a gem she is the boss when it comes to christian fiction writing like i've heard of francine rivers everybody everybody in the christian circle 
at south of francine rivers and people have been recommending me re recommending her to me but i never got around to reading her until somebody got this for my birthday and whew, this book is absolutely beautiful it is one of a kind so redeeming love by francine rivers i think this is her most popular book because it says over one million sold it's actually going to become a movie next year which i'm so excited about and i'm definitely going to reread it before the movie comes to uk but it is based on the book of hosiah in the bible and i haven't read the book of hosiah in detail but i do know about it and it's literally about how god said to Hosea that she sh that he should marry a prostitute as an example of his redeeming love to israel because Hosea was a prophet to israel and this is what it's based on so we have angel who's the main character she's a prostitute she had a very 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 hard childhood a very destructive childhood her mum was a prostitute so it was kind of generational and she gets involved with some very wicked people she gets involved with some very very scary people and that was her life until somebody called michael hosea came into her life michael hosea is a farmer he's a believer he loves god with all his heart and he sees this woman in the middle of the street while he's selling off his produce and he hears god's voice say to him that's the one that's your wife marry her and at first when I read that, I was like, hey, no build up, nothing, <laughs> you know, no, a little bit of explanation, no revelation, just marry her. And Michael Hosea, obviously being a man of God, he wants to obey. So he goes to Angel and finds out that she's a prostitute. And he's like to God, I'm sorry, did I hear correctly, God? Because you told me to marry this woman, but she's a prostitute. And God tells him, yeah, you heard correctly. I want you to marry her because it's so much more it's so this book is so much more than just michael hosea and angel story it's about god's redeeming love to us sinners because there's a bible verse that says while we're sinners christ died for us and this is what this book to me encapsulates it's about god's redeeming love through our brokenness through our sin through our past through the darkness that we have placed ourselves in god's light shining brighter and brighter so michael eventually does marry angel they go through a lot of ups and downs a lot of pulling and um, pulling and pushing she runs away almost like we sinners run away from god when we because we can't see how a god so majestic so wonderful so perfect could love us and send his only son to die for us that's how angel was feeling but the end at the end of this at the end of the book everything just makes sense and this is the only book apart from the bible that has made me cry i cried this book hey i'm a very emotional person but i don't really cry at books or movies unless it's like really serious but this book made me cry i cried buckets of tears and it was just beautiful it reminded me that like wow god really redeemed me but i'm talking a lot a lot of detail about my books so this video might be a little bit long but just sit back and eat some popcorn Right, the next book that I have is The Beginner's Guide to Intercessory Prayer by Dutch Sheets. This book was absolutely fantastic. I read his other book on intercessory prayer, which was given to my best given to me by my best friend for my birthday last year. And because I love that book so much, I decided to get The Beginner's Guide, which is more practical and more simple. Like as a Christian, intercessory prayer is very, very vital in our lives we need to be interceding for the body of christ we need to be interceding for the church for the nation for our family for ourselves and christ interceded for us as well by dying on the cross and he intercedes for us every single day while he's sitting at the right hand side of the throne of gods so i thought i actually really want to understand intercessory prayer deeper and dutch sheets he gave me the keys like it was absolutely amazing it's sound the scriptures that he uses are fantastic as well and the way that he explains how the reason why we're able to intercede is because christ first interceded for us blew my mind i never 
ever ever saw a prayer like that that because we, the reason why we can pray is because christ did it all on the cross that's how we have access to the throne that's how we're able to present ourselves to the king of kings and the lord of lords so i really do recommend this for anybody that's trying to get into prayer more especially intercessory prayer the next book that i have is also an all-time favorite and it is Norse and Crosses by Mallory Blackman, an absolute queen in the English literature, young adult scene, by the way. And this is the first, this is the book that, the first fiction book that I read this year. This is the book that I read to help me cope with third year and projects. I had started reading it in 2000 and 20 but then i stopped like i did with most books because i wasn't a, really a reader then and i didn't finish it but then i finished it in 2021 and <laughs> this book oh my lord i'm so in pain because this book holds a lot of pain i did not like the ending of this book at all and i'm not going to say what happens in this book because that would be spoiling it but norse and crosses is basically about callum and sefi they're best friends. Sefi's a black girl and Callum is a white guy. So um I believe Sefi Sefi is a cross and Callum is a naught. And basically is is it's kind of dystopian like, but basically black people are in power, black people have the money, black people have the influence, black people have the privilege white people are basically working class they don't have any privilege they don't have any status and these two they're best friends but they also you know there's a bit of romance there they also like each other and it's literally just about their journey through their friendship F discovering how to really be friends through a lens of privilege and you know why i love this book because mallory blackman did it for us black people like she turned the narrative because i've read a lot of dystopian a lot of i grew up on the hunger games i grew up on Di divergent on things like harry potter and stuff like that and there is always a white person that's the center of the narrative but here black people are the center of the narrative and that makes me very proud because right the next book i'm pretty sure everybody knows about and this is the vanishing half by brit bennett and this is a very 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 popular book i saw this all over instagram all over youtube all over twitter everywhere I just said you guys are screaming this book at me so i'm just gonna read it and i'm gonna see if i like it this was the second book that i read in 2021 and I don't know what how to say this it was a good book but i don't actually really remember what happens <laughs> which is bad because i can remember everything that happened in all the other books i've talked about so far but this one was kind of a blur it was almost like i just kind of swallowed it and i didn't really digest what i was reading because it was so popular and i just wanted to read it for reading for reading's sake and it is about two sisters called Stella and Desiree. They are both mixed race and um, one lives as a black person, the other one lives as a white person. So she passes as a white person, which is um, which was a very big thing back in the day. So this is historical fiction too. And yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be reading this book, if I'm, to be honest. This is everybody's fave and everybody has loved this book. And it was good. I finished it like i wasn't bored again but i don't know i can't if i can't if to me if i can't really remember what happens in a book then obviously it didn't impact me that much but yeah i recommend if you guys want to read those type of books right so the last couple of books are more christian based this is another fave of 2021 and it's called what's so amazing about grace by philip yancey now philip yancey is a christian journalist but he's also a christian author and this book is whew, it's absolutely amazing i decided to read this book because i was having some very interesting conversations through my different church groups and through my friends about grace and i've always seen this book in my study which is where i'm feeling filming right now and I've always wanted to pick it up, but I just never did. But because of this conversation, I decided I'm going to pick this up. 
and i'm so glad i did because it really opened my mind to what grace is really about and how that makes us as Christians stand out from all the other religions, stand out from every other perspective that's in the world. It's the fact that Jesus came to give us grace. And the way that Philip Yancey writes is absolutely amazing because while it is a non-fiction book and while he talks about the different elements of grace and how Christianity is different from all the other religions that are out there and how grace is the defining point, he also includes like fictional stories where he explains through those stories why grace is so important and why we need to have grace in other people as well as Christians because that's what makes us more Christ-like. I really do recommend if you're if you have a hard I hard idea accepting God's grace because I know when I first became a Christian it was almost just like God but I don't deserve this but it doesn't matter that I don't deserve it. He still wanted to give it to me as a free gift. <laughs> and that's what the gospel is about. The gospel is about Jesus's love, grace, and the fact that we couldn't do anything for salvation. He did it all. I really recommend. The next couple of books that I have, let me leave it to the front. The next book that I have is Let Me Be a Woman by Elizabeth Elliot. And Elizabeth Elliot is quite a well-known Christian female author and she was a speaker as well um from way 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 back and a lot of people on instagram were recommending this book and i really 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 wanted to understand biblical womanhood biblical femin femininity because as someone who's i'm quite outspoken i'm quite bold and i'm quite i'm quite somebody that's quite stuck in her views and her ways i just wanted to understand like different things on like submission on being a woman like what how god god has called me to be as a woman um things on marriage things on singleness and apparently this was the book for that so reading this i was just like some of the things that she was saying were getting me very annoyed because again i was stuck in my ways i had a lot of different views that weren't necessarily biblical if i'm being honest and reading this book was re reinforcing that my views weren't biblical and i just i couldn't i couldn't help but not agree with what she was saying and this was the first book that i've read that it was like okay i'm not agreeing with anything that the author is saying but i'm still going to keep on reading the old esther would have just put down the book and just moved on but i finished it and it really enhanced my view on biblical womanhood and it made me want to study it for myself even more through the bible and through other books i do really recommend for young female christians to read this and you may disagree with it but i still believe that it's going to open your eyes to what god has called us as a woman to be um sorry guys my nose is itchy the next book that i read it's been highly recommended by one of my best friends and been paid if you're watching this and it's called the secrets of the secret place by bob uh, how do i pronounce his name sorge i think it's called yeah sorge and it's keys to igniting your personal time with god i started reading this in 2020 but i put it down and i didn't finish it and then i finished it in 2021 this book is fantastic it's actually more of a devotional so there are enough devotionals for every week of the year so there are 52 chapters so you're supposed to read one every week i didn't do that because i was hooked from the very beginning i was hooked i said no i'm going to finish this book but in the new year i think i'm going to plan to use this book as a devotional so that i can really meditate and understand what the author is saying and really write about it and really contemplate and reflect on it so there's 52 different chapters and it's basically just about how we can have more intimacy with god behind closed doors and that's really what our relationship is about it's about communion with god it's about being one with him every single day making the choice to seek him behind closed doors every single day and this book really really helps me understand that and then the next book that i have is becoming a woman after god's own heart loving and living passionately for god by my very own pastor pastor bimbo fuller oh whoops pastor bimbo fuller a la day and i've been did this book come out no i don't think it came out this year i think it came out in 2020 let me just check 
yeah 2020 and it's basically you know how like david from the bible he's called um a man after god's own heart pastor bimbo was studying the psalms studying david's life for quite a while and she decided she was like why is david always called a man after god's own heart so she decided to focus her study on that and out came a book <laughs> so it's but now it's for us women to become a woman after god's own heart and this book was absolutely fantastic it was practical it was sound it was everything that i needed and more because i obviously want to become a woman after god's own heart i really recommend this book for any young female any um christian that has just become a christian look, have i yeah i've explained every book so the last book is why i stays by gail haggard and this book was absolutely fantastic as well this is an autobiography autobiography book slash personal memoir book and i read this when i first became a christian so like maybe two three years ago but i decided to reread it after a message that my pastor pastor bimba follow alade preached and it was about forgiveness and everything like that and gail haggard is the wife of ted haggard and ted haggard was a very big pastor many years ago like he had a very big church and um a couple years later he had a scandal where he um a lot a lot of things came out about his sexuality about his past and um a man decided to basically expose him and his sexual past with him and everything like that so this um woman is his wife and this book is about why she decided to stay with him because she had a biblical reason to divorce him and to leave him because he was unfaithful to her um but she decided to forgive him and to stay because she believed that that's what jesus was calling her to do and this book wow not only is it a page turner but it really teaches you the meaning of christianity the meaning of just forgiving and it's easier said than done because when i first read this book i was just like hey girl i don't know how you did it i don't know how you stayed this book because she was on display every single day after this scandal came out there were a uh, pastor of a mega church so news was talking about them social media was talking about them they had to leave their church um they had issues in their marriage their children was being targeted and yet she still stayed it was a very eye-opening and transformative book for me and it's definitely some that i'm a book that i'm going to be reading time and time and time again i do really recommend if you're that type of person that loves autobiographies if you love personal memoirs i know that they are a personal favor of mine and i'm definitely going to read more in 2022 so guys i have literally talked for 40 minutes about books wow i can't believe that and i said to my mom that this video is only going to be like 20 30 minutes but you know what i'm not sorry because i really enjoyed that and i'm definitely going to be doing more videos like this let me know if you guys also want a video about the books that i've read this year in the bible and how i found them and what i've learned from them i would really love to do a video for you guys like that so do comment down below but i hope you enjoyed watching please do subscribe to my channel and if i don't see you before the new year happy new year guys i hope that you have a blessed 2022 and i hope that you align with what god is telling you to align with in that year so bye guys